Okay, great. Thank you, Nick. You know what? I'm just going to give it one minute. Two mics, microphones, either Emily or Karen. <laughs> or that'll screw you up. Mike Ryan's microphone. Do you want me to give it? You got it. Excellent. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, we're going to get started. Nick, whenever you, I'm sorry, finish what you're doing. Let, give me the thumbs up when you're done. I know. Peter, do I do the reorg or do you? Um, you follow calling to order, pledge allegiance, then we'll do the reorg action items. You can move them if another board member. Okay. Okay, thanks. Maddie, Ryan, you guys good? No problem, take your time. Uh, Peter, how many on the reorg, is it just A, section A? Um, there's three, it's A, B, and C. A, B, and C, thank A you. A is the yep. annual appointments, D is the annual motions, and C is the, the standing board committee. Okay, very good. And it's one to 15, one to 38, and, and one. And the only change we have to make is to the board meeting schedule, the June 20th, 2022 meeting will be June 13th. Okay, which is where? Uh, that is... Uh, A9. A9. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Matt, are you good? Excellent, very good. Ryan, you all set? Excellent, off we go. Great, thank you everybody. Um, welcome everybody to the Board of Education meeting, Monday, April 25th. Um, just a quick public service announcement here for the open public meeting statement. In accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975 announcement, I wish to announce that the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the School District of Chatham's Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, place thereof posted in the Board Administrative Offices, sent to the clerks of the Chatham Borough, the Chatham Township, the Library of the Chathams, the Chatham Courier, the Daily Record, the Star Ledger, and the TAP. Um, Mr. Cole, would you mind taking attendance? Ms. Chick Ms. Ciccarelli. Here. Ms. Clark. Here. Mr. Del Sandro. Here. Mr. Gilfillan. Here. Ms. Kenny. Here. Ms. Ross. Here. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Smith. Here. And Ms. Weber. Present. Eight present and accounted for. Thank you. If you're able, um, please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is behind uh, Peter. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We just have a few, um, this is a reorganization meeting, so we just have to appoint um, some annual appointments and uh, motions for designations and then also some standing committees. So if you just bear with me one moment and bear with the board, we can get over to the regular agenda, which is action packed tonight. Um, so just for expedience, I'm going to move items A1 through A15, which are the annual appointments. Second. Uh, Peter Ann seconded that. Um, does everybody have any questions or are we ready to, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Eight zero. Okay. And just a correction, I'm sorry, I didn't call out A9. There's a, a change in the meeting in June. I apologize, I should have done that ahead of time. Isn't that, didn't you say A9? Or A9 on the regular agenda? No, it's A9. The meeting? No, it's A9. Uh, I'm sorry, it is it's A9 in the annual motion, so there's the next, uh, uh, next section. B9. B9, sorry. B9. Oh, okay, good. Very good. Then I didn't screw up yet. Excellent. Then I'd also like to make a motion to move all the annual motions and designations, B1 through B38, with a correction on B9. We're going to move the June meeting up till June 13th, so we're going to move it um, ahead one week prior to the school year ending. So B1 through B38. I second. Excellent, thank you. If there's no questions, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Abstentions? Very good. Noted passes 8-0. And the With correction on B-9, correct? Okay. <clears throat> and then the appointment of standing committees, which is just, just C-1. Yes. Yep. Can I get a second? Second. I feel like I'm begging for it. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Excellent. Okay. C1 passes 8-0. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Um, so now we're getting into the regular meeting agenda. Um, I do not have any comments because it's such an action packed. I want to pass, pass it right over to Dr. LaSusa. Um, I know he has a, a lot to talk about, so take it away, Dr. LaSusa. Sure. I'm sorry it's a little bit crowded up here, but I'm going to just do a quick presentation, oh. a few slides, so I'll ask all of you to go into the house. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to just kind of pick, off, pick up from where we left off at the March meeting. So we had a meeting five weeks ago where we approved the preliminary budget. Um, and as I mentioned at that meeting, we still had some work to do on the budget. We were about $370,000 over budget. Uh, we needed to uh, specify an additional $370,000 worth of cuts. And even then, the budget includes a about $650,000 of excess surplus that we are expending this year in order to make the budget, and that's due to a variety of factors and pressures that we have. Uh, you can watch the last meeting, but um, they have to do particularly with special education costs, which encompass mental health and other uh, issues that we're dealing with with students, and uh, inflationary pressures that is causing the cost of just about everything to rise. Um, so that's where we were on April 18th, and in addition to that, uh, on April 18th, if you can think back five weeks ago, we accepted two resignations. Uh, one, our assistant superintendent, who's going on to become a superintendent in another district. Another was the uh, resignation for the purpose of retirement for our principal at Southern Boulevard School. And then since that time, uh, moving forward to today and what's on the current agenda, uh, our high school principal, Mr. Groh, who's in the audience here, uh, also is resigning to pursue a superintendency, which is wonderful for him. And I have to note that Mr. Groh has been principal for 16 years, which is the longest of any principal in the history of the school district of the Chathams since we formed in 1988. Uh, and that's a lot of kids that he has touched. So I really feel a debt of gratitude to Mr. Groh and all that he's done for the district and for our students. Uh, we also are accepting the resignation tonight of our supervisor of performing arts who's pursuing other opportunities. And then finally, in the wings, we have the, uh, a leave of absence for our Washington Avenue school principal. Uh, so I'm going to kind of try to weave these two uh, sets of, of issues or whatever, or events together um, and try to talk about some changes personnel-wise that will uh, I think benefit the district, provide us with stability, but also help us achieve the savings that we need to uh, make our budget balance. Uh, so first off, I'll, I'll mention uh, that very first resignation on the prior slide was uh, Dr. Karen Chase, the assistant superintendent. Uh, over the past month, we've been involved in the selection process for the next assistant superintendent. Uh, much of this occurred leading into the spring break, then during spring break, and then the week after spring break. I'd like to thank all of our board members who serve on the personnel committee. Uh, 
Ann Ciccarelli and Jill Weber, for example, spent about 20 hours over the course of two days right in the middle of spring break. Uh, Michelle Clark, Lotta Kenny, uh, they all helped out in different ways. Uh, so I'm pleased to uh, announce tonight that I'm recommending that the board appoint Dr. Uh, Mary Donahue to the position of assistant, assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. Dr. Donahue uh, was one of 71 applicants and through every round of interviews, there were four total, uh, she demonstrated an expertise and uh, a knowledge base with respect to curriculum and instruction that impressed everyone that um, interacted with her. And that's saying something because it was a very talented pool of folks that we got to meet with. Uh, Dr. Donahue currently serves as the Director of Curriculum and Instruction in Harding. Uh, Harding is a uh, K through eight district. She's also the sole principal at that district. So she has a wealth of experience uh, in terms of every curricular area at every grade level. Uh, and we really think she's going to make a great addition to our team. Southern Boulevard School, I'm recommending the uh, transfer of Mr. Marco Fryer to the principalship. Uh, Mr. Fryer's been with us for 10 years as assistant principal here at Lafayette Avenue School. He uh, served last year, the beginning of last year, so uh, a year and a half ago, if you can think back that far, uh, as the acting principal at Washington Ave, right as we were opening up from the pandemic. Uh, and I think that Mr. Fryer will do a terrific job. He's capable, he knows what students need to be able to do uh, when they come to Lafayette Avenue. He's worked side by side, Ms. Russo and I have full confidence that he will do a great job at the helm at Southern Boulevard School. Uh, once he transfers into that position, uh, I do not plan to recommend a replacement at uh, uh, Lafayette Avenue School. I've spoke with, spoken with Ms. Russo about this. Uh, this will be our first position of savings that we recognize for budgetary purposes. Uh, we may need to increase some of our counseling staff, and in fact, one of our counselors at Lafayette Avenue School has her letter of resignation that we will be accepting tonight. Um, but I'm confident that Ms. Russo is capable of leading the school and that with a little bit of extra support, she can do so without missing a beat. Chatham High School. Uh, as Mr. Groh exits for greener pastures, I'm recommending that Doug Walker be transferred into the position of principal. Uh, Mr. Walker has also been an assistant principal with us for 10 years. Uh, he's involved in all aspects of uh, the administration of the building. We have a terrific team at Chatham High School. It's an extremely well-run building, thanks to Mr. Groh, Mr. Ronda, uh, Mr. Henderson, and of course, Mr. Abdelaziz. Uh, so I think that uh, sliding Mr. Walker into the principalship will help provide stability to the school and will enable us to keep on moving forward uh, as we have in recent years. Uh, I'm recommending that Mr. Henderson, who currently occupies the Dean of Students position, be transferred into the assistant principal role that Mr. Uh, uh, Walker will vacate if the board accepts these recommendations. Uh, Mr. Henderson, most of you know, uh, but he has done a terrific job as a teacher at Chatham High School. And then this past year, he's worked really closely with a number of our students who have struggled as we've uh, exited from the pandemic and otherwise, and has worked very closely with Dr. Sortino, actually gonna have both of them do a presentation at our next board meeting to talk about some of what they've seen and the issues that we've tried to work through this year. Um, and then I'm recommending that we not fill that position either. Uh, so the second position administratively that would help us achieve savings to meet budget. Washington Avenue School, I'm recommending to the board that we transfer Ms. Kristen Crawford into the principal, acting principal role uh, while Ms. Dudlow is on leave. Uh, Ms. Crawford has been a supervisor with us for seven years. She has an elementary background and has served as a teacher and a coach at that level. And she's one of uh, several supervisors or administrators that we have in district that help us cover schools in the absence of a principal. Uh, and she is uh, extremely enthusiastic about this opportunity and I think she will do a great job uh, while Ms. Dudlow is on leave and that leave will begin after Memorial Day. Earlier this school year, uh, about in the middle, toward the middle of the year, we accepted the resignation of our supervisor of world languages. Uh, I mentioned we're accepting the super, uh, resignation of our supervisor of performing arts. 
recommending to the board that we abolish both of those positions and that we create a 12-month director position entitled or titled Director of Arts and Languages. That person would have oversight and responsibility and supervision for the performing arts and our world languages program. Uh, and that would be the final uh, point of savings to help us uh, make budget. So that's the set of recommendations. Uh, moving forward, if the board uh, approves all of these recommendations and appointments tonight, I'd be meeting with individual uh, school teams uh, and others to work out any kind of uh, transition plans that we need, determine what kind of shifts we have to make in terms of responsibilities and roles, establish a meeting structure so that we all stay on the same page, and then we'll have to advertise for the positions that are being vacated, and the two top bullets are the administrative ones. The third one will be the uh, school counseling position at Lafayette Avenue School that's going to become vacant as a result of this board meeting and that resignation. So in summary, um, trying to prevent or provide stability in the leadership structure of the district while at the same time uh, looking for efficiencies from a, a budgeting standpoint so that we are uh, in a sustainable, posi sustainable position as we move into next year. And then, as I mentioned earlier, since we're using 650,000 of our excess surplus, which is roughly half of it, we likely are going to be in a similar position next year at this time uh, when we're looking at the 23-24 budget, meaning it's likely that we will have additional cuts to make at that point. For this school year, we're trying to keep whatever reductions we have uh, away from the classroom and away from the teaching staff. Uh, next year, we'll have to evaluate where we are and see what we need to do uh, to come in within the 2% tax levy cap. That's it. So board members, you can come back on stage, ask any questions if you'd like. And Nick, you can roll the screen back up. Does anybody have any questions for uh, Mike? I'm sure we have a ton of questions, but or comments. It was an extensive process. I don't want anybody to think we shortchanged the process. We just expedited it in those six weeks. And like Mike said, many of us met for many hours a day on, on <clears throat> certain days. And uh, Beth Grant and her team, you know, really uh, crushed it. It was really it's. it's we're, we're fortunate that we have such a deep pool here in Chatham and we're able to promote from within because as you could see it was a bit of a, a domino effect. Every time you move one piece it impacted three others and it's, there's still a lot of work to happen and I'm sure Beth and Mike and, well not Karen, you're gone. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Dr. Donahue will you know, help us straighten things out but it was, um, it was quite a process and does anybody have any questions? say is that although it's listed up there as transfers, all these individuals went through an interview process and were, you know, it wasn't just like a, a transfer. They were, went through a rigorous process to earn the positions that the internal, the, in, the internal candidates. So it's not just a transfer. It's, so I just want to be clear about and it. And I, I use the technical term. Yes. Beth made them. And we had said last, at the last meeting, we were trying to, we, we had to make cuts it was, you know, over 300,000, approaching 400,000. Our overarching goal was to have the least impact on teachers and programs and other support staff. So that led us toward the administrative, um, you know, level. And fortunately, you know, we were apparently growing superintendents. So, you know, some of that movement allowed us to, to move people around. And we have, again, such a deep pool. We're so lucky to have these folks that we can move into other positions. Um, do we have time to ask folks to just say a quick hello? 
Sure, that'd be that'd be great. Dr. Donahue, do you mind leading us off? So this is Dr. Donahue, where, who was exceptional in her meeting with the board and the committee, and it was a lengthy process, and she handled it like a champ, and then went on to like four or five other rounds of interviews. So, Mary, we just want to say welcome. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, for those of you who I haven't met yet, I'm Mary Donahue, and I did um, live in Chatham from 1995 to 2017. Um, my children went through the um, Chatham school system so I can speak firsthand to the quality and I'm just thrilled to join the team um, and hopefully continue the tradition of excellence and thank you um, for the opportunity. I'm thrilled. Thank you, Mary. And we have other folks, um, if you don't mind, Marco, Darren, Connor. This, this way folks can put a name with a face. I mean, many people know. Doug is like the man behind the curtain, so it's, he's going to be the man in front of the curtain now. Hello, everyone. I'm Doug Walker. Um, I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity. It's actually 10 years ago where Marco and I were appointed as assistant principals at the same board meeting, so we kind of come full circle here. Uh, I'm really excited to, to assume the role of principal at the high school. Um, one of the things that, you know, when I came here, I recognized what an amazing place it is to work, amazing students and teachers, and that hasn't changed in the 10 years. I'm, I'm more excited than ever to take a leadership role. And so thank you all, and I look forward to working with you moving forward. Thank you, Doug. Hi, everybody. I'm Marco Fryer. Uh, just wanted to take the opportunity also to say thank you so much uh, for giving me this chance. I really, really look forward to getting into SBS, and it just so happened that they're all here tonight. Um, not planned, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's great. I know a lot of the staff just over the years of being in district, um, top quality staff and great building, and I'm just really looking forward to getting in there and uh, moving on to the next step in my career, so thank you. Thank you, Marco. Hi everyone, I'm Connor Henderson, uh, taking the position of assistant principal at Chatham High School. I uh, started my career here as a teacher, teaching video production, uh, moved into the role of Dean of Students last year. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to work here and I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Connor. Some of your past students are here helping us out with the meeting. Um, and just, I'll just note, uh, Ms. Crawford, Kristen Crawford, she um, isn't here tonight. She actually is uh, working toward her doctorate in science education at Rutgers and was presenting at a national conference in San Diego this weekend. So she's, I think, in flight maybe right now or she's coming home okay. imminently. So that's why she couldn't be here tonight. And Kristen has done some presentations, so you may have recalled um, she reviewed the science curriculum with them, uh, you know, a, a few years back. So you might be familiar with Kristen. And I did have to say, Mr. Groh, thank you for everything. I didn't realize it's been 16 years. You were the principal for all three of my sons, and you know they're they made it through, and they're just about gainfully employed. So thank you. <laughs> One's not quite fully baked, but almost. But uh, seriously, thank you. You're at every event, every you know whether it's something good or something bad. You turn around and there's Darren. I mean, you don't even know he's there, and then boom, something happens. You need you need him to be the the you know a diplomat to to talk to another school or another administrator and. You don't even have to pick up the phone because you're calling and the guy's there. I don't know how he does it, but um, really, thank you. Our kids have benefited greatly from your, your leadership. Our administration has been lucky to have you, and I'm sure, you know, Rumson Fairhaven, I, t I told them you're a rock star and they should treat you as such, so you're never going to look as good in purple as you did in navy, but, you know, what are you going to do? So thank you, Darren. That's it for my report. The only other um, thing that I just have not gotten around to doing, I'm going to do it tomorrow, is send out a survey about the calendars to the parent community so that you all have some uh, initial feedback at the May 16th meeting. Um, are you sharing it with our staff as well? We haven't been doing that. Oh, okay. um, the preference is to just go to the parents. Okay. And Dr. Chase, you're with us until the end, right? We're not saying our goodbyes to you yet. No, you're not. Okay, excellent. And we still have time to torture you then. <laughs> so stick around. Excellent. Does anybody have any other questions or comments or? 
Mike, you'll let us know as the rest of the dominoes fall into place. I'll do my best. <laughs> we'll do our best to keep up. Um, and uh, Matt, just on the budget front, the 370,000 deficit, that was with the 2% increase that we had to make up, right? We're still looking at a 2% mm -hmm. increase. Okay, that hasn't changed from the March 18th presentation? Yeah, that was the final figure, no? Yeah, it was the final figure. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we said it out loud. And all those slides are on the March 18th meeting, if anybody wants to go back and look at um, some of the detailed slides on the budget. Dr. Lasusa, did you have anything else? Not that that wasn't a full report, but did you have anything else you wanted to add? I think that's it for me for the, the current time. We are in the middle of NJSLA testing. That's going smoothly so far. We do have some delayed openings uh, that we have to have at, at the high school. Um, reminder that the Thursday, Friday before Memorial Day weekend, schools will be closed. We do have another board meeting before then. Um, but I think that's, that's kind of it for now. How are the students um, handling this standardized testing? We, we haven't had it in a bit, so. Any I talked to one assistant principal today for a few minutes. It okay. seems like things are going reasonably smoothly. Okay, no additional anxiety or, okay, great. I was hoping that would, that would go by the wayside with the pandemic. Uh, Peter, the construction update? Sure, um, just briefly, all of the projects that um, will be approved uh, in, that are in the budget for 22, 23, that will be approved later on tonight. Um, we are progressing in all of the planning stages. Um, and as soon as we open the new budget, we'll be ready to issue the purchase orders. And all of the contractors have been diligent and doing all of the pre-work that they need to do. And we've had pre-construction meetings. So we're ready to hit the ground running um, in June. And hopefully it'll all be complete middle of August. So school will be ready to open with all of the improvements done. Okay, so no gotchas. And what about the track? You had mentioned that you were looking at vendors. Uh, we have um, selected a vendor. Just need the final word from the finance committee, which hope to do tonight. But we have a uh, vendor lined up that uh, we found in one of the uh, co-ops. So it is reasonable. And he has come up with a timetable, um, had openings that um, if we give the approval, he can start approximately Monday, June 6th. The track will be closed for... The track and Cougar Field Complex will be closed for July and for June, July, and the beginning of August. It should be ready um, for the start of football practice in August, and we've communicated that with the uh, athletic director, and he's okayed that timetable. So, and we're doing graduation back at Menon. Graduation is at Menon. Yes. Okay. So we're ready to ready to roll. Okay, and there's no there's nothing there's no school events after June sixth um, athletic contests. No, I checked that with the athletic. Sorry, Mike. I know Jill was looking at you, but we did talk to the athletic director, and Mo gave us the go ahead. The last possible could be the first weekend um, in June if somebody made the one of the I think the girls lacrosse made state finals or something. Okay. So we're set to go, and if they even had to play their last game would be away the weekend, I think right at the beginning of June so they can still practice on the home turf so we don't even have to move them. Okay, great. So, you know, that was one of the keys. You didn't want to switch, have them switch fields. And if students want to use front cougar or back cougar, will that the, be? All of the grass will be open. The gates around the track complex will be locked. Okay. No one will be allowed in except the contractor or our maintenance guys. Okay, but the students can still use front cougar yeah, or back Yeah, they can cougar. play in the, all the grass they want or the back cougar, anything they want to do, just no access to the track or turf. Okay, great. Okay. Is graduation really at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Practice. Yes. What? what do you mean usually two o'clock? It's, it's not usually two o'clock. Or three o'clock. But it's, so but it's usually usual. later. Yeah. Okay. Good, I can get that. Sure. Darren's playing with us on his way out the door. Just want to be sure we make it. Yeah, we also need to get that information out because uh, we need to make sure we blast that out, that there's an earlier start time because I have a graduate and I had no idea I would have been shown up there. Late. You know, you can Late. check the CHS app. It's on there. I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> we need to blast it out, though, as we're leading out, because people who are just, yeah. you know, there's a lot going on. And they're... Three o'clock. Okay, great. Three o'clock at Menon. Perfect. Excellent. Anything else for Peter? Yeah. On construction? Oh. No, excellent. Uh, committee reports. Mrs. Ciccarelli on personnel. You've been busy. Yeah. 
that's correct. I don't know, that was a long week. Um, yes, we met on April 13th. We talked about various vacancies and whatnot. And we're meeting again. We don't have anything scheduled, do we? We have a meeting scheduled for this Wednesday. I don't think we need to have that, um, but we will be in touch with you to finalize okay. Perfect. since we've had the one during spring break. Okay. And all those meetings culminated in the presentation that Dr. Lasusa just gave. That's correct. That was yes. It's not, it's not that there were quick meetings, but um, that you saw the result of it on the screen. Ms. Clark on curriculum. Um, yes, curriculum met on April twentieth. Um, the curriculum committee met and got an overview of the new health and PE standards. Um, in the time that we met, the governor's office has requested the Department of Education conduct a further review of the proposed standards at this time. Although the standards are not drastically different from what's been taught in the past, we are taking a pause at this time and will wait for further guidance from the state. We are grateful for the thoughtful and diligent work of Lisa Latarulo and Karen Leister, our supervisors in this area, for being thoughtful, methodical, and intentful for our students. We are going to pause. Parents will still, whenever we are able to get the accurate standards, and revised standards, parents will still be able to review the curriculum material prior to the instruction and have the option to opt their child out of any or all of the lessons that will be presented. And we're looking at a timeline where we just don't know, right, at this time. Um, so you can, most likely that information will come school-based when mm -hmm. we're ready to roll yep. and that these, and that information to access the learning materials will be made available at that time and the opt-out information in addition to that will be made available. So I wish I had more specifics, but we were looking, learning, and then we hit the brakes. And the standards, Mike and Michelle, that we're offering are the same that we've been following, the, the, the standards that are currently in place. There's nothing's really changed this year. Um, no, but the, the ones that are the, just for a little backdrop, the Department of Education in 2020 proposed new standards, and correct me if I'm wrong, to be implemented for the, at the latest in 2022, so the school year, 2022-23. Um, we are very lucky to have supervisors in this area who have been lockstep looking at this every step of the way. Um, due to situations that people may or may not know of, it became brought back, to, circled back to the Department of Education and they put a pause on these, at which point they issued new guidance, uh, revising and making some of the standards, now correct me if I'm wrong, to unpack some of them, take some of the materials out that could be instructed. And at that point, we, you know, we don't think it's worthwhile until we know exactly what the Department of Education, we're not going to make our own decision. We want to do what's best for all our students. We want age appropriate. Um, and we also want parents to be informed as we move forward. So until there is appropriate guidance from the state, we don't get to opt out. We as a district don't get to opt out of the standards, but parents certainly will have that option if they would like to exercise that. But since there's been such misinformation, we are hitting the brakes, we are pausing, and we are going to wait. So, mm -hmm. and so although they're, whether they're different or not, we don't know exactly what they're saying now. So every so we'll time wait. they change, we're gonna wait. We're not gonna. And there's no timeline, because I assume the Department of Education doesn't have a timeline yet doesn't look that way. So I guess we'll know when they know. And Michelle, just to repeat a point that you just made, school districts are obligated, required to adopt standards that are put out by the state. Where we have some discretion is in how we develop the curriculum, what resources we use, and the type of instruction. And quite frankly, that's what makes Chatham Chatham. It's the, the phenomenal teachers and the supervisors that craft that, that instruction and that curriculum. They take the standards and they you know, make it appropriate for our students, for our students' age, for our students' level. And again, that's why people, you know, want to be in Chatham. That's why other districts tap our teachers to be supervisors in other districts. So we're required to deliver the standards, and then we have excellent staff and teachers that will then craft the curriculum and deliver that to our students. So more to follow on mm -hmm. the health and PE when you know. You'll yep. let us know. And if we know before the next board meeting, you will be hearing from your building-based principals or from the assistant superintendent's office, um, but at this time, it looks kind of unlikely at this point, but we'll see. Does anybody have any questions for Michelle or Mike or Karen on any of that? Nope. I know it's in the, in the news a lot, so I didn't know if there was additional comments. Okay, excellent. Over to finance and facilities, Mr. Gilfillan. 
Uh, yes, we met on March the 28th. Um, continued discussions around the skate park and the request that they use Board of Ed um, property in order to put the new skate park in. Uh, we continue to have discussions over this, but have major concerns around the liability side of it. Uh, the budget negotiations, um, some initial commentary on sports funding, and then we did have a discussion on, on future budgeting. And what I think people need to understand, and particularly it was evident tonight as Mike was speaking, was just the, the fiscal issues that public schools are, are going through um, right now as we deal with kind of what would be perceived as a terrible business model. Uh, we have a fixed revenue line and a non-fixed variable line, and we are dealing with a situation that we had never had to deal with in the past, which is inflationary issues. We've not dealt with energy costs rising in 10 years. There's a lot of things that are now starting to get to the point whereby you know, we are seeing that variable line and per certain portions of our variable costs gobble up more and more of our budget on an annual basis due to the fact that we have to maintain a 2% um, max revenue increase you know, with a couple of little nuances here and there. So you really have to understand and commend what the administration and, and this Board of Education has to do going forward in terms of the reprioritizing of budgetary dollars in order to make sure that we maintain the quality education that this town has, has come to expect. So you really have to give Mike and his team you know, serious credit as to handling this situation um, where we are now, where we are going forward. Um, and this, this pressure is not going to subside over the next number of years. So this is going to be probably more and more difficult, as Mike said, for us to do these, manage these budgets going forward. Um, so Mike, did, did you guys and, and Pete, you guys did a great job this year. Um, but just know we got, it's time to sharpen up those pencils again as we move into next year, because this is only going to get harder. Thank you, Matt. Any questions for Matt on any of that? Grim forecast for next year. <laughs> it's true, though, Matt. You're right. I mean, let's not hide behind it. We're going to have to be Dr. Downer. I said that so that I mean, the public has to understand what the, the situation that we're in and what the work that has to go into this and understand that there are massive pressures. And, you know, we need to be thankful of, of some um, outside revenue sources, which, you know, the Chat of Education Foundation to really maintain the, the, the quality. And it's just the situation that we're in. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, we're going through a number of different changes that, that there's going to have to be major adjustments to. As we all know, we're going into a, you know, kind of a down cycle in terms of our student population. So costs and, and, and budgets are going to shift dramatically. And again, I don't, I don't need to be anything but positive as to where we are, but just I think the public needs to understand is that there is serious pressures coming our way and, and there's going to have to be a number of changes to make sure that we manage this for the benefit of the child. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. I'm filling in for Mr. Ryan. Uh, Mr. Smith? Yes. Um, <clears throat> policy and planning we met on March 28th also. Um, we discussed the calendar for 2023-2024. Uh, um, as Dr. Lasusa described, he will be sending around three calendars to get parent feedback on. Um, we also discussed um, a policy which was the safety plan for healthcare settings in our school buildings um, that had uh, things such as COVID uh, language in them and mask language in them that needed to be either abolished or removed. Um, we discussed some out of district tuition uh, requests and um, we also had a number of policies uh, that we discussed that are on the agenda tonight. Excellent. Any questions for Bradley? Excellent. So we're going to move over to liaison reports. Does anybody have any anything they want? Susan? Susan? Yep. Um, CF's um, spring appeal is underway. And um, the Chatham, most Chatham households received a letter last week. And CF is really appreciative of all the supporters who gave generously this year to help fund um, all the grants. And for anyone who didn't receive it, the letter is also online, and donations can be made there at chathamedfoundation.org. Uh, teacher tr tributes will begin uh, Tuesday, May 3rd. And this is a great way to support teachers and also to, for um, giving support to CEF. So thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Anne. Athletic boosters, they had their um, 
big bash was on Saturday night. I did not attend. I don't know if anybody here did, but I did hear it was a um, huge crowd and that everyone had a great time. They did a great job. I know it had been postponed, but um, apparently it was a it was a great night. So kudos to them. I'm sure they raised a ton of money. Excellent. Thank you, Anne. And then I just have a I wanted to give a quick update on the Chatham Borough. As many of you know, they're meeting right now for their second town hall, um, and they're discussing Post Office Plaza. And I was at the last meeting on the uh, last Monday, and then there was at least 100 p folks in the audience. And the planner did a really good job of explaining, you know, what w the history of where they are till now, what the current options are, and they're discussing Post Office Plaza specifically because that has been designated as an area of redevelopment. And a lot of folks are saying, oh, well, you should do nothing. And I just want to make it clear that the, the, the poor council, they've been working super hard. Once that area was de uh, des designated as an area for redevelopment, they have to meet their affordable housing obligation. And their minimum obligation for that parcel, wh wh however you parse that up, that parcel is 15 family units. And they can accomplish that in any number of ways. They can put up a larger development and a portion will go to affordable housing. They can do, they can fund it themselves and do a smaller um, affordable housing. And they've, they put up five options for, for residents to comment about and, you know, and take questions. And so they had a town hall last week. They have one right now at the middle school. And several of the council members have made themselves available, um, I think, at least four other times in smaller groups to not violate the Open Public Meeting Act. They've had one or two council members. And again, they've been doing a really, um, a really good job. And I don't want to oversimplify it, but it's very complicated in that it's not just they talk to the developer and, okay, we have a deal. They have to work with the judge. They have to work with the affordable housing center and the borough. And all three of those folks have to agree. And then if by some stroke of luck they do agree, then that plan has to, they have to find a developer to actually build it. And it has to be profitable for that developer. And if they can't find a developer, they have to go back to the drawing board. So, you know, folks may have been a little critical on the timeline, but it, when you have that many players and that type of legal negotiations, it just takes time. But I think the council is trying to do the best they can. I will always believe that folks that are volunteering will do the best that they possibly can. And I believe they're going to make a, a decision sometime in mid-May. I think there's an additional opportunities if folks want to um, speak to a council member. They're always available through email. They're very diligent about answering emails. So I just want to let you know, um, I did speak at the mic um, just to ask them to consider, be mindful of the impact on the schools. Um, nobody has a crystal ball, so we don't really know what that means um, in terms of you never know who's going to move in. You know, Nobody's going to know who's going to buy my house. Nobody's know who's going to buy Ann's house. If you get an influx of second graders, that could pu push you to need another teacher in that section. And that, you know, that bubble will go through the district throughout. So um, again, I wouldn't want to sit in their volunteer job for sure, but I did just ask them um, to be mindful of the impact to the town and specifically the school. Um, the presentation's online. Um, I, th I thought the planner did a nice job of outlining kind of where they were, where they are now, and what, the, what, what they need to do going forward in a fairly short period of time. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments about that. So they're down to five options, and those are posted online if anybody wants to, to see where they're at right now. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, great. Uh, so moving along, I'm just going to the meeting minutes for March 21st, the public and executive session. Um, Peter, I'm sorry, I don't remember who was not present. Uh, only Mr. Gilfillan needs to abstain. Okay, very good. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to move the minutes for March 21st, public and executive session. Um, Mr. Smith seconded that? I yep. don't know if you heard him. Got it. Excellent. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? One. There you go. Duly noted, passes 701. Excellent. Very good. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being patient. Uh, we're at our first opportunity for public commentary. Um, hearing of the citizens during the public commentary section of the agenda is an opportunity for any member of the public to be heard about any issues which are or are not topics scheduled for the current meeting. To help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit all to be heard, speakers will be asked to limit their comments to a reasonable length of time. Um, I'll try and <clears throat> take notes on any, well, I always take notes, but if there's any questions, I'll try and answer them at the end after we close public comments. So if you wouldn't mind, if you can introduce yourself at the mic, and please don't forget to uh, sign in if you would. Please remember to sign in so you can duly be noted in the minutes. Thank you. Old. My name is, here we go. 
Okay. Hi there, my name is George Iannuzzi and I'm an English teacher at Chatham Middle School and a member of the Chatham Education Association. First, we wanna start off by congratulating Dr. Donahue on her appointment. We are looking forward to working together moving forward. As we approach the end of this challenging school year, I'm sure I can speak for everyone when I say that we are hopeful that we continue to push forward so that things remain moving in a positive direction for all of us in the Chatham community. We'd like to take a moment tonight to remind you all about the qualifications of the staff in your district. In a poll recently sent to members of the association, we learned that 58% of members who responded have worked in the district for over 10 years. That's over 160 staff members. We also learned that of the 200 certified educators employed by the district that responded, over 78% hold at least one master's degree, if not two master's degrees, or even a doctorate. According to a survey from the National Center for Education Statistics, the state average for a master's degree is 45%. As a reminder, certified educators in New Jersey are only required to hold a bachelor's degree at any point in their career. In the past three school years, association members who are certified educators in the district were rated highly effective 436 times. 139 association members that responded also hold additional certifications or licenses, including literacy and reading specialists, administration and supervisor certifications, certification, sorry, ESL certifications, educational facility managers, licensed social workers, library media specialists, HVAC, teacher of the deaf or hard of hearing, the list goes on and on. I'm grateful and proud to work in a district filled with staff and educators who are committed to their personal and professional growth just as much as they are to the growth of their students. Um, so good evening, my name is Marianne Masumi. I am also a teacher at Chatham Middle School along with George and a member of the CEA. Um, here tonight we would also again like to take a moment to acknowledge the positive work of association members um, and what they've been doing as the staff of the schools in the district have remained committed to providing experiences that go above and beyond expectations not just for our students but for the community as well. Uh, at CMS alone, we are looking forward to the spring fling dance coming up in just a week, um, the return of our spring concerts and our school's talent show. And I know for me personally, I'm very excited as a civics teacher for the return of our DC uh, field trip. Uh, we also wanna highlight some exciting grants and programs occurring throughout the district. The association continues to use pride and fast grants to provide meaningful experiences for the community. Partnering with the Performing Arts Boosters, the association Association has used grant funds to provide senior citizens attending the high school's performance of Anastasia with a to-go meal after the show. Over 100 meals from our menus were given out to attendees and Woodland Bakery provided specialty cookies. Additionally, 50 leftover grocery uh, bags, sorry, were delivered to the Chatham United Methodist Church Food Pantry. In order to continue our work with the Methodist Church and Helping Hands, this week we have kicked off another food drive similar to the one held back in January through the association in order to provide 150 grocery bags filled with non-perishable food and hygiene products. Lastly, look out for the association table at the upcoming district art show in May where we will be providing refresh refreshments as well as twisty crayons for the younger ch kids attending. Thank you. Good evening, uh, James Hitchings. I'm a teacher at the middle school and an another member of the Chatham Education Association. Uh, to continue on what uh, Mary Ann was talking about, some of the things that Chatham Middle School have been up to, uh, we've continued to hold our monthly Workout Wednesday fundraisers uh, to raise money for various charit charitable causes. Um, our science teachers recently attended several professional development sessions and are working to incorporate new methods of questioning and different scientific phenomenon to engage their students. CMS and other district staff raised over $1,500 that was used to purchase medical supplies that were sent to Ukraine and, with the help of our maintainers, contributed to five truckloads with cl clothes, food, and first aid supplies that were donated to the Ukrainian Cultural Center of New Jersey, and those will be sent over to Ukraine. Uh, our goal as part of this is to show students and their families that all members of the community uh, should support each other and that when the world gets rough, we show up to help each other because it is the right thing to do. 
Uh, as we move forward, we hope that as the district continues their conversation and their consideration of the administrative restructuring, that you include the association in conversations as appropriate, uh, especially the World Language and Performing Arts members. Uh, to close this evening, we would like to once again thank the community, their guardians, the parents, uh, for their support over the course of the past year. Um, as you know, education is a partnership between many different people, and the teachers and the educators are really glad for the partnership with the community. Uh, and as we move forward into next year, and as we begin our new contract negotiation cycle, we, will, we look forward to the continued support of the community as we work to achieve our mission to provide the best possible education for the students of this district. Thank you very much. Thank you. James, could you just tell folks what you teach? I know what you teach, but... Oh, I'm a design and technology teacher. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Bill, you came to our meeting. That's something. Sorry. You came to our meeting instead of the, what, the town hall. Oh, okay, very good. That's fair. <laughs> but you're here first. I'm here first. You can tell who's more important. <laughs> uh, Bill Heap, uh, Chatham Borough. Uh, a couple of comments. Uh, first, I guess it's a very flattering problem to have uh, when you know that every other district in New Jersey wants to poach our goods. Um, I wish everybody who's moving on well, and I wish those who are moving up and coming on board uh, good luck. Uh, we appreciate it, and you are one of the reasons why everybody wants to move to Chatham. Uh, second comment, uh, Ms. Clark, could you give us an example of uh, a curriculum standard that the state is reconsidering um, when you get a chance. And third comment, and this is, might be nitpicking, but uh, in the presentation uh, last board meeting, there was a figure presented, uh, a, a per student cost presented that was a levelized figure, a rationalized figure of what it cost us in relation to other districts. So I think the number was approximately 16,000 and change, as opposed to Princeton that uh, spends 20,000. I think that uh, rationalized figure has its place, but it would also be nice for you to put side by side in that presentation uh, the fully loaded cost. Uh, when I take a budget, uh, and I think this, I have my figures right, of 82 million, divide that by roughly 4,000 students, uh, that comes out, if my math is right, to about $20,500 fully loaded. That money, just that $4,000 doesn't go away. It's there, and we have to spend it. So it would be nice to see those figures side by side. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional public comments before... Um is Southern really going to just sit there and let middle school hog the mic? Wow. All right. <laughs> just saying. Um, so we're probably going to take those in reverse since Mr. Heap has to head out. Um, Matt, did you want to? I, I know we've covered this before. Mike or Peter, correct me if I'm wrong. It, it's a little difficult to do that side by side because of the way the numbers derived with busing and, and lunches. So, Mike, do you want to? Yeah, I've actually used a different figures. The one that was from the last presentation is called the per pupil budgetary cost and it it does what you exactly what you say. It normalizes and takes out things like some districts have no transportation costs, other districts do. Some districts have exorbitant security costs, other districts don't. So it tries to focus on the the apples to apples. There's a total cost per pupil that also the the state releases. That includes pretty much everything all in, including pension obligations and such. I've used that before. I've also used, I've taken numbers just straight off the um, Division of Community Affairs or Department of Community Affairs, which loads up the debt uh, on top of, you know, debt payments because it breaks things out by municipality. So we can, whatever number you use, we compare as favorably as the chart displayed in the last meeting, but the numbers do change, they go up, and then there are some middle numbers depending on which figure you use. I can certainly yeah. consider using two or three different figures in future presentations. Um, the state hasn't really given us very much information about uh, the standards. They, uh, I had a meeting on Friday morning, uh, Morris County superintendents and the Department of Education official that was there didn't have any answers, so they didn't, they did not specify of 
all of the standards that are listed, and obviously the health and PE standards include things like nutrition and exercise and sportsmanship and a whole laundry list of items. They didn't specify which would be reviewed. They simply told us that there is going to be a review that takes place. We don't have a timeline for you. We don't know what that might mean for curriculum revisions that takes place this summer, and we will let you know as soon as we understand what the process will entail. Michelle, did you want to add to that? Well, originally, what they had in, and then when they re when they reblasted out, they put some things in parentheses, correct? That they said. So were, that was a clarification. Yes. Okay. So they sent out a clarification sure of two or three of the standards that have gotten a lot mm -hmm. of attention. Like, for example, at what grade level? I think it's by grade five. The st student should be able to define sexual orientation and gender identity. So they clarified. Um, they made some clarifications mm -hmm. about curriculum, uh, you know, the standards being mandated for school districts, but curriculum uh, right. being up to the individual school districts and how they achieve the standards is up to them and the resources and materials they use being up to them. Uh, they clarified, or at least they did at my meeting, that while standards are mandated for all public school districts in New Jersey, and we do not have the uh, you know, option to opt out of those standards. For parents, there are two specific standards that parents might, may opt out of when they appear in a, in a program. The one is family health and sexuality, and the other is dissection of animals. And those are the only two. So if a family objected to the dissection of animals for religious or, or moral reasons, um, they can opt out. Uh, but if the next day the lesson is about you know, respiration or something uh, where there is no dissection of animals, that you can't opt out of that. That's part of the, the program. Um, so I don't have any real additional detail except, like you said, our, our goal is to be thoughtful and to do age-appropriate work with students and ensure that we are um, faithful to the standards and that we're doing age-appropriate curriculum and instruction, which is what our teachers are trained to do and what our supervisors work with them to do. Yeah. And being transparent with parents um, as to what the curriculum will be and what it will look like to make an informed decision for your child, but we're unable to do that until we have guidance from the state, of which we don't have right now. Uh, hopefully, does that answer your question, Bill? Okay, excellent. And then to the teachers, I know you wanted to hop, I didn't know if that satisfied that. And to the teachers, I mean, we're, your, we're Obviously, big, your biggest fans. We do the best we can at negotiation time, so I understand that message at the end that was slipped in there, um, that negotiations are next week. Um, but we take every opportunity to, not next week, I'm sorry, next year, I apologize. I lost the whole year of my life. <laughs> but I mean, I don't, I don't think you would say that this board doesn't take every opportunity we can to thank our teachers, show appreciation for our teachers. I, I, I wish I could shout it from the rooftop or, or or hire an, you know, an ad on a popular television or a TikTok for the kids because this school district, you are the heart and soul. The kids respond to you amazingly. I mean, the supervisors are fantastic, the administration staff. I mean, you know, some other boards may not be as complimentary and may be more adversarial. That's not our, our jam. We love all the teachers. I, we th I think it's the hardest job in the world. I could never do it, not for a day, not for an hour. Really, I couldn't. Uh, my sister was a teacher. I didn't last one hour guest speaking in her class, and it was a second grade class. So it's really, I mean, you guys are fantastic. Thank you for coming every, you know, every board meeting to each of you. Each different school comes and gives us a little insight as to what you're working on, you know, what's going on, what's on your minds. You know, that we'd like to hear a little bit more, what's a little bit on your minds, unfiltered. Um, so please keep coming back, and thank you for your, thank you for your time. I know you've had a 12, 15-hour day, and... You know, here you are still at a board meeting, so thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Any? Oh, I guess we're done with public. There's another opportunity at the end if something spurs on. And the teachers, don't feel bad if you, if you want to leave um, for the agenda items. I know, like I said, you're on your 15th hour, so the camera's not on you, so if you want to sneak out, sneak out. Um, so moving over to personnel, uh, Ms. Ciccarelli. Okay. Peter, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm <laughs> I'm moving action items A1 to A31 on the regular agenda, A1 and 32 to 40 on the addendum, and then 
41 on the addendum, which supersedes A6. Whew. Was that correct? That's a lot. And the, Beth has a report on agenda item A18. A18? Yes. Correction on 18 to note a change to the FMLA and JFLA start dates. They should read 8-22-22, and the extended leave start date should read 11-15-22. Sorry, Beth. I may ask you to repeat that because I wasn't at my page yet. So if you wouldn't mind again. Sure. So resolution number 18, ID number 7819. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, FMLA and NJFLA start dates should read August 22nd, 2022 and the extended leave start date should read 11-15-2022. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Sorry. And to we did. Okay. I didn't hear that. Okay, thank you. Okay. And to clarify, A41 was a result of the, after the discussion in the pre, in the executive session that preceded the board meeting. Yes, okay. thank you. And a lot of the movement, it seemed kludgy, a lot of the movement yeah. had to do and with the items that Mike talked yeah. about earlier. And Good just to, to clarify, A41 supersedes one, individ one individual that is listed in A6. Okay. It's only one, in A41 only affects one individual that is listed on the attachment for A6. Okay. So it's only one person. Okay. Got it. Thank you. We're still Se digesting oh, it. Seconded. A oh. lot of, a lot of seconded. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, very good. A lot of that was covered in Dr. Lasus's mm -hmm. presentation. Um, uh, Peter, do you mind? Sure. Agenda items A1 to 33, A1 on the addendum, A32 through 41 on the addendum, and A18 as adjusted by Ms. Grant. Ms. Ciccarelli. Yes. Ms. Clark. Um, I vote yes to everything. I'm going to abstain from um, A32 on the addendum. Okay. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Gilfillan. Yes. Ms. Kenny. Yes. Ms. Ross. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. And Ms. Weber. Yes. All agenda items, with the exception of A32, pass 8-0. A32 passes 701. Excellent. Very good. Um, over to finance and facilities, Matt. Yes, I'd like to move action items B, 20 to, 1 to 20 on your regular agenda, and then 21 on your addendum. Second. Uh, just a few donations to be thankful for. Um, one is from the Municipal Alliance Committee of the Chatham to donating 100 books with a value of over $1,400 to the four district K to five schools. Um, a donation from the Chattuck Athletic Boosters of 500 bucks to the high school varsity baseball dugouts so they can be painted. Uh, and this is the annual Jill Weber $500 Bank of America Volunteer Grant Program to be used at Mike's discretion. That's kind of like a deja vu these days. What was that? It's kind of like a, um, this is an annual. Just might as well just make it the annual. I know. The well, annual Jill Weber. I have the fund. Um, <laughs> they upped it. The uh, donation of pads and easels, uh, amount of $500 from Mrs. Susan Podiak, if I hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And then last one from the New Jersey Chinese Teachers Association, a donation amount of $50 to use for the Chinese program at the high school and other cultural related activities. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Don't forget the big one in here, people, is the budget. Right. Does anybody have any additional questions for Matt or Peter or anybody else on finance? Again, the detail, if you want to go back to the budget, I would recommend going back to the March 18th meeting. March 18th. Okay. Peter, would you mind? Sure. Agenda items B1 through B21. Ms. Ciccarelli? Yes. Ms. Clark? Yes. Mr. Del Sandro? Yes. Mr. Gilfillan? Yes. Ms. Kenny? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. And Ms. Weber? Yes. Agenda items pass 8-0. Excellent. Ms. Clark, over to you for curriculum. Yep. I move um, curriculum items C1 through 3 on the regular agenda. Second. No addendums? No addendums. No. Everybody else? No. We're no good. It's because Dr. Chase has her house in order. Yes. No addendums. 
discussion. You got a second, right? I Later. believe it was Ms. Ms. Kenny. Excellent. Thank you, Lada. This is um, so. Just of note here, the delayed openings are item number three. So just keep an eye on that. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? There you go. Duly noted. C one to three passes eight zero. And Mr. Smith, I apologize. I didn't give you a heads up. Would you mind moving the policy items? Uh, I'd like to move policy items D one and two on the regular agenda uh, to a vote, please. Uh, second. And the board member election process, that was just that um, one correction, correct, Peter, where we just flipped the order of events? Yes, we just flip-flopped the order. Okay, so there's no material change. It was just not, the order? Not at all. Okay, great. Thank you. I just want to double check. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for Peter or any of the policy committee? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for those two, two items, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Duly noted, D1 and D2 pass 8-0. Excellent. So we're moving on to board business. Not that we haven't covered quite a bit already, um, but does anybody have anything for board business? Yeah, I do. Oh, Mr. Gilfeld, the floor is yours. Um, well, I've been serving on the Chatham community on the Board of Education. I'm actually going into my 13th year. Uh, it is something that I have enjoyed, respected, and feel blessed to have been able to give back to this community that my family calls home. Uh, these last two years have been particularly draining for every member of this Board of Education and more particularly administration as we have dealt with this health crisis. And I must commend and give many thanks to this administration who live this day in and day out versus when we actually have to be there for support. Uh, a person in life sometimes gets that feeling when you know it's time. For me, I realized recently it's time. I have decided to resign from the Chatham Board of Education and tonight is my last public meeting. My original term would have ended right about now, but was extended to, on to November when we changed our general voting policy on budget. So April 2022 should have been the end of my fourth term. Four terms, to me, I guess is enough, and I really feel that this board is in great hands. Um, before I leave, I need to say a few thank yous to every administration member I've ever worked with. Thank you, as you've always had our children in your heart. To all the teachers, aides, workers, custodians I have met, I was always so proud of your passion and love for this district. To so many board members, with a special shout out to Richie Connors, who asked me to look into joining this board over a decade ago. You made so many late nights so much fun. My favorite times were the private chats we all had when these meetings were over. Pete, I remember when you came on and we had our first meeting. You said you were a bit taken back by how we looked at finances and the trust that we gave our BAs. I said, we will allow you to do your job until you lose our trust. You never lost our trust. You've been a complete joy to work with. Karen, I kind of wrote this a while back, so this may be a little bit odd. I remember how <laughs> nervous you were when you first started and just how morally, how excited you were for this role. My view was always how long you were going to be able, how long we were going to be able to keep you before we lost you to a superintendent. I guess that was kind of prophetic because a few days later, you got that job. Your passion of education and your commitment to the kids is admiral. We were so lucky just to have you for the time that we did. Beth, all I can say is you deserve a very long vacation. Always spot on with your recommendations and ability to find the best candidates. Thank you for making our lives that much easier. Emily, truly amazing start for the district for you. you know, we can't be more happy to have you. And just remember that this board is really amazingly supportive to everything that you have to do. You have a very difficult job. Sue, I didn't get to know you very much. But honestly, it's the interview that, that, that we had and your commitment to the Board of Education is one of the bigger reasons that I feel it's okay to step down now, that we've got good people that are willing to step in. Chris, what's interesting about you is you came on as your children were leaving. <laughs> you did what your heart told you to do, which is to give back, and I really admire that. Brad, I find you to be the epitome of a hard worker, you know, being in the city, but always making sure your schedule works to make these Board of Education meetings. You are a role model for what so many other young people should be doing. Mike, we miss. 
<laughs> uh, Lada, while I always thought I was the senior member, it is in fact you. What is so great about you is you care about our kids in so many ways, not only on the Board of Education, but also for your countless hours, the CEF. You're truly someone to be admired for your commitment to this community. Michelle, your experience as a teacher was always so valuable to this board by giving us a real life opinion. Your sense of humor combined with your passions always brought a smile to my face and what made being on the Board of Education so special. Anne, another one who is just the epitome of selflessness and commitment. I'm going to miss our time on the dais. Now the hardest ones. Jill. That wasn't too hard. <laughs> Hold on. Is, uh, is there a human more dedicated and passionate about public service role than you? None that I've ever come across. You are easily one of the smartest people I've ever met. Your memory shocks me every day. This school district and community owe you so much, as very few know just how much time you dedicate to this role. You have been a great leader and a true friend through these years. Others feed off your passion and dedication. Thank you for everything. Mike, all I can ever say about you is wow. Pretty amazing, in my opinion, I've been able to serve under the greatest superintendent in America. Your intelligence and work ethic would have made you a multi-gazillionaire in other jobs, but you followed your heart into education. Your commitment to the children of Chatham is awe-inspiring. I always loved our conversations after board issues were complete. While we disagreed on many things, the chats were the epitome of what conversations should be today, full of debate, but plenty of laughs. Personally, I would sign you to a lifetime deal to keep you in Chatham as we can never ill afford to lose you. I'm gonna miss you a lot, Mike. Well, I'm pretty sure you'll still pick up my phone. Finally, I must thank my wife and children for never once questioning why I committed so much time to this Board of Education. Thank you for always supporting me. Again, thank you all. It is I who leave here a better person for having known all of you. In the end, simply, it's just time. Thank you, guys. Wow. Matt's been here for 13 years, and now I just realized why he voted against moving the vote to November, because his term was up in April. <laughs> it, it took me that long. Um, but Matt has been here for 13 years through three very, I have tears in my eyes because of his speech, and I'm not a crier, as most people would assume. <laughs> but um, Matt has been here through three superintendents, three completely different superintendents, and he has helped and guided each of them as from in the finance perspective, you know, what the community wants. And it's funny, of all the board members, Matt and I probably disagree the most, but I have tremendous respect for Matt. We always come to a meeting of the minds. And sometimes what he says in committee, you're thinking, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen? But, you know, Matt, Matt always does the right thing. He does what's in his heart. He always does what's best for the students and the, for, for the community. Um, you know, he reminds me of, I have this speech that I keep in my folder, and it's the Teddy Roosevelt, the man in the arena, and that's, my, that's Matt. Matt is the man in the arena. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, and that's Matt. So Matt, you've been a, a, a champ, a trooper. We thank you. You're, it's going to be tough to fill your shoes, but somebody, on, somebody from the township is going to have to step up and and uh, go through the interview process again. Um, so just from a technical point of view, I think we have 60 days to fill that. Okay, excellent, okay. So folks, if you're out there from the township, if you wanna throw your hat in the ring. Um, does anybody else have anything they wanna say? Please don't. Please don't, we can't help ourselves, Matt. 13 years, man, 13 years. We're gonna miss you, Matt. We are. I just, Jill, I just have to say that uh, what else can I add, really? But um, over the years, as different board members have come on the board, 
I have often said, if there's one board member to try to emulate, it's Matt. Yep. He's, he's got his viewpoints, he's got his opinions, he's insanely smart, he, he knows numbers like Elon Musk knows uh, Twitter, <laughs> and he's got no agenda ever, ever. He listens to every person regardless of what every other viewpoint is. He thinks about the students all the time. He, he just, he wears it on his sleeve. He's, he's just the, the, the emblem of what uh, civic service is to a community when it comes to public education. Um, there's just no better person that I could ever ask for as a board member and a friend. And Matt, I thank you for everything over the past 12 years. I'm sorry to see you go. Here, here. That's it. Matt said we have to stop. Hold on. We have to stop that. Thank you, Matt. Um, so just on a logistical point, Peter, will you um, post or get information out? And the township committee will be myself, Lada Kenny, Susan Ross, and Bradley Smith. Um, and we will follow the policy. And I don't know how we're gonna find someone like Matt, but we need people to engage in this process to show the commitment to your community, um, show the commitment to our schools, and be a willing to be part of the solution to keep Chatham the districts that it is. And there's a reason why Matt stayed so long. So don't be afraid to come forward. We look forward to meeting with as many people as put their name in to find the best replacement for Matt. Um, we're looking at a day, Peter, what did we agree on to accept ap applications? Are we saying May 9th? Uh, to that will either May 9th or give me one second. I don't uh, have a May, uh, Tuesday, May 11th is where you'll go. Okay. Um, um, anyone interested, just look at weeks. the website. Give it to, yeah. Tuesday's the 10th. So. Okay. You know, you can contact the business administrator's office, put your name in, and please, please, please come forward. Excellent. Thank you. I'm so happy I don't have to say goodbye to Dr. Chase and Matt on the same mm, night. That'd be a tough one. <laughs> okay. Okay, excellent. So we have now have our op second opportunity for co public commentary, if anybody's interested or anything spurred their interest during that. We love Matt's speech. No? Okay, excellent. I do not believe we have an executive session anymore. Okay, excellent. So I make a motion to close the public session. Second. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Excellent, done deal. Thank you, everybody. Have